Oh, hey guys, what's up? I am the Universal Gamer. How y'all doing? Sorry, you kind of caught me at a bad time. I was in the middle of playing Dead Rising 3 when I got thrown into the zombie apocalypse. And what a coincidence, because not only are we talking about a game that's really fun and has zombies, but isn't afraid to get fucking insane. Sorry, kids, this, uh, this episode isn't for you. <laughs> you will know soon enough. Hey, who said that? Um... No one? Oh, okay. Let's get started. Ah, zombies. It seems the appeal of these things will never die, with tons of zombie movies every year, popular TV shows, comics, and let's not forget about the video games. Zombie video games are not anything new, but they are more popular than ever with the Walking Dead series, Zombie U, Dead Rising, even titles like Dead Island and the recent Dying Light show that the genre is not going anywhere. And of course, I could never forget about the franchise that I'm here to talk about. The House of the Dead series. Now who could forget the classic, innovative game series that is House of the Dead, one of the first fully 3D rail shooters. Not only that, the game was fast. It loved to throw a ton of enemies at you with just enough time to take them out, throwing a kick-ass boss at the end of every level, branching past, give it replayability, excellent music, and it's no wonder the game was such a huge success and is still enjoyable to this day. Now, there are six games in the House of the Dead series, technically eight if you want to count Typing of the Dead, and for the most part, all these games are the same in terms of gameplay, story, and style. But there is one game that is a complete departure from the cheesy story and tone of the series, and that game is House of the Dead Overkill. This, in my eyes, is the best house game in terms of story, gameplay, and music. And if you haven't played this game, I'm going to stop you right now. Get off your ass. Get off your computer. Go get this game. But hey, I understand if you're not sure. Sometimes idiots need to be shown. So if you need more convincing, sit down and let's introduce our two heroes. Our two main protagonists for this game are Special Agent G and Detective Washington, two stone cold badass agents on a mission of peace justice and to blow the face of every motherfucking zombie they can find. And yes, it is the same Agent G from previous House of the Dead games, but more fun. His personality derives from old school cop movies, very cool in attitude, always has a story to tell, and a love for country music. Now Detective Washington is of course the newest member of the series, and he's, well, how can I put this? He's like every grindhouse and hardcore action movie cliche there ever was, and it's awesome. I love the relationship between these two characters. Even though it feels like constant arguing, it's more along the lines of a buddy cop flick. And in buddy cop fashion, there are complete opposites to each other. But there is a friendship that blooms from this in the end. But you know what? These two characters wouldn't shine if they weren't given a good story to ha put them into shit situations. So let's get right into that. The story of Overkill is like something straight out of a cheesy grindhouse movie, which does make sense because the creators of Overkill admitted that the inspiration for this game's style came straight from the movie Grindhouse. So expect plenty of blood, f-bombs, and completely over-the-top nonsensical scenarios. I mean this story is beyond ridiculous, it goes into the level of what the fuck did he just say, and you know what, I loved every minute of it. For as cheesy as the story is to the original House of the Dead, I really didn't care too much for it. But with Overkill, I couldn't wait for the next cutscene just to see what the hell they were going to say or do next. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me actually try to explain the story. It all goes back to the Cold War when the US tried to develop a drug that turns humans into super beings. But unfortunately, these experiments failed. Skip ahead to 1991 where our story actually begins as Agent G has been given his first assignment making this game a prequel to the entire House of the Dead franchise. His mission, head down to Louisiana and hunt down the head crime lord Papa Caesar. Now through a series of circumstances G is teamed up with Detective Washington who has a bone to pick with Papa Caesar as he's actually the one that killed his father. 
So yeah, there's kind of a revenge story here and it does go in more depth with a few twists along the way, but that's just the gist of it. You gotta see the rest for yourself to believe it. It's insane. Overkill follows the classic House of the Dead formula, meaning it's an on-rail shooter with nothing deviating from this. No third-person sections or anything like that. You just shoot zombies, fight a boss at the end, see the next cutscene, rinse, repeat. And you know what? That's fine. Why change what's already perfect? But of course, even though I said it's exactly the same, there are slight changes that make this game more fun and add replay value. For one thing, you can purchase a variety of guns to change up the way you play. You can upgrade every single gun and it can get pretty crazy using a pistol to one shot a zombie. By the end, you'll have an invincible arsenal. But what's really cool is that you can dual wield weapons. But guns aren't the only thing this game gives you to fight off the hordes of hell. You also get grenades which you collect by shooting icons around the level. Throwing these can clear out a section and can really come in handy during the boss fight so you might want to consider saving them for emergencies. And one more effect the game gives you is a slow mofo meter, which are pickups you have to shoot to activate. This really helps if the area gets crowded and you don't want to waste a grenade. Also, in order to upgrade your gun, you need money, which you get around the levels, which you shoot to get the cash. There are also a point system that comes into play by comboing shots into a multiplier. Don't miss a single shot or get hit, and it will lead to a higher score. But get hit and the meter drops to zero, or worst, lose all your lives and you'll have to pay points to pick up where you left off. So if you're one of those gamers that's looking for the perfect score, you'll definitely have your work cut off out for you, since this game requires you to keep your eyes open more so than the rest of the series, and is more along the lines of Dead Space Extraction or Elemental Gearbolt. Yes, blowing the heads off of zombies, mutants, fine, mutants, whatever, it never gets old. But the real thing that takes the cake and cranks this game way past 11 is the bosses. So, guess what's next? Fucking jackass trying to correct me mid-video. Where the hell are you? Bosses are insane in every level, each having their own unique design, attacks, and patterns. I mean, it gets straight up weird, from a crippled sidekick to a screeching banshee, or, as Detective Washington likes to call her, the bitch. The bitch is ringing! And that's just the first two bosses, there are still five more to go through, and honestly, of all the modes they have in this game, I'm surprised there isn't some kind of boss mode where you fight all of them in one go. As I mentioned, their designs are great when compared to other House of the Dead games. They're definitely much more detailed, being that this is an older game, and their attacks change up more frequently. Usually, once you take about a quarter of their health away, they'll add one more attack to the roster. Now, I wouldn't spoil the rest of the bosses for you since they're so damn awesome, but trust me when I say that the final boss and the end of this game is one of the most over-the-top ridiculous moments I've ever seen. You have just gotta play this and see it for yourself. So, say you beat the game when you think, well, that was fun, too bad it's all over. Well, guess what? It's not. You still got an extra setup in story mode with extended missions and a higher difficulty setting. And if you still think that's easy, get this. You only get a set number of lives that you can't buy back through points. How's that? Bitch. And second, if you have a friend to play this game with, you're not alone fighting off the zombie hordes. Like me, you can participate in a variety of minigames which are fun, and you can play these games with your friends or by yourself, but no bots unfortunately. All of this put together gives you many a reason to come back to play Overkill, whether you want more of a challenge or just a party game. Other extra features you can unlock is a variety of music from the game, all original, an art gallery, and a few videos, one of which being a trailer for Sega's game Mad World. However, these can only be unlocked if you beat both the regular campaign mode and the director's cut with a certain accuracy or a met a certain score. But of course, what is any good shooter without top-notch controls? So that's what we're going to talk about next. Being that this is a light gun game, it utilizes the Wii mode as your gun, with the controls being solid. This game is a great example that the Wii can produce and did produce quality shooters in the right hands, and Sega has proved countless times with not only this game, but also in Ghost Squad and the beloved Conduit series that they can make a game like this. I think it's worth mentioning that this is one of the few Wii games that does not require you to use the Wii Motion Plus. All you'll need is a regular Wii mode. You can also use the B button as your trigger and the A button to throw grenades. The controls don't get more complicated than that, and the rest of the game is just strategy for when to shoot, reload, and use grenades. The music in the game reflects the tone. 
It's awesome. It ranges from hardcore heavy metal to 70s funk. But it's all original, even you the line from our main characters in certain songs. Just like the language in the game, the music really shouldn't be heard by children. And the best thing about the soundtrack is you can listen to all the tracks as unlockables after being the main campaign and director's cut. If one word can describe the levels, it's variety. There is a lot of variety in every level, unlike other games in the series where it's just labs and mansions. You go from a mansion to a circus, a train, a swamp, a prison, it's great. Each section is completely different from each other with its own enemies that have their own unique attacks. Some levels have mini bosses, others have stage hazards, and while I'll admit I like almost everything about the levels, I think the last level was an endurance, going on forever. I swear, I was about to freak if that shit didn't stop soon. But the final boss that it led to was well worth the wait. Now probably the most important thing in a game like House of the Dead is to have a ton of places for the zombies to pop out from to surprise you. These games are all about fast reaction time and Overkill nails this with flying colors. Zombies do pop out from the obvious places, but often do come from unsuspecting spots and the occasional jump scare of a zombie right in your face. There's no shortage of undead to load up in this game. But even though I've been jerking this game off the entire video, I still had a few issues with it. That's it all you've been jerking, you tool. Alright, that's it. Who said that, huh? Who thinks they have the pair to mess with me, hmm? Come on out, I'll bury you! Oh, don't worry. We shall meet very soon. Well, um... That wasn't ominous or anything. First of all, the game's graphics are pretty ugly. Even by Nintendo Wii standards, it's not that great. Second, the game can be glitchy at times. Like, when I'm shooting at a zombie, sometimes its body would glitch out into blackness on the parts where I've shot it. It wouldn't happen all the time, but on occasion, it's pretty damn noticeable. But these problems aren't game breaking or anything and can be easily overlooked. I guess the only real problem is the length of the game. It's a little short. You got 7 episodes which you play through twice to get everything, and one level takes about 25 minutes or so to beat. So one playthrough will take you through about 3.5 hours, but if you want everything, it'll be about 7 plus hours. But again, problems aside, I still found the game hella fun and I gladly took that second playthrough. But now that we've gotten everything else out of the way, problems, all that, it's time to talk about the game's history and what an interesting one it is. Overkill was mainly developed by Headstrong Games who have made some great games in their day. And some shit ones in others. They made all Battalion War games, Top Gun Hardlock, Silent Hill Downpour, and their latest game being Pokemon Art Academy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's pretty funny just how varied their company really is. Now you may think just because the game came out on the Wii, it may have been received terribly, but no, it's the exact opposite. The game was given 8s, even a few 9s. Critics said that even though it was exploitive, filled with f-bombs and toilet humor, they couldn't turn away. Not only that, but Detective Washington's character was elected by Game Informer as one of the top 10 heroes of 2009, and Papa Caesar is one of the top 10 villains of 2009. On top of that, it got re-released on the PlayStation 3 as an extended cut with two new levels. There was even an iOS release called The Lost Reels, which is three extra chapters. And finally, in 2013, the game was re-released on the Mac and PC as Typing of the Dead Overkill. This game has led a pretty interesting legacy, the likes of which I never would have anticipated. I mean, it got into the Guinness Book of World Records for God's sake. Yeah, in 2009, it received the award for most profane game in history. In the end, House of the Dead Overkill was fucking awesome. And if they ever make another House of the Dead video game, it should follow this one in terms of in the formula of story and gameplay. Since, let's be honest, there aren't that many games out there like this anymore. I mean, sure, you know, there's a few exploitive games here and there, but there aren't really that do it this well in a modern gaming genre. It's games like this that make me really appreciate Sega. I mean, of course, they've had their failures in certain flagship franchises that they should never have failed. But you know what? Aside from that stuff, they know how to make a game. It could be a powerhouse of creativity when they need to be, when they get their head out of their ass. Games like this, Mad World, The Conduit, tons of other creative video games, Sega can do it. 
I have such high hopes for the future since there's a ton of over-the-top games being released even recently, like Sunset Overdrive, Bayonetta 2, Far Cry 4. I could go on and on, so I think we should bring this video to a close. Now, House of the Dead Overkill is available on the PlayStation 3 and the Wii by whichever one you can get your hands on, okay? And in the end, I will give House of the Dead Overkill a 9 out of 10. I'll see you all in the next Universal Gamer. Good God, does this ever end? I mean, where are all these zombies coming from? Oh my God. <laughs> you think you can escape so easily? You're gonna be here till you die. Wait a second. You're one of those things on Bleach. Uh, a hollow. Very good, Eugene. Very good. I didn't actually think you'd know that. Who are you? What are you doing here, and what is it with all this? Why'd you attack me? Well, I don't have a name particularly, so you can just call me The Voice. I'm a hollow. You're a hollow. And I'm here for one simple reason. You were going to review my game. You wrote a script. You had everything planned out, and then... You deleted me! Oh, come on, man, I didn't mean to. You deleted me, and you thought this game would be better? You honestly thought this would be better than my game. So I thought, well, if he likes zombies, then I'm gonna give him some zombies. Look, man, you don't understand, okay? What happened was... Silence! Now that I have you, I'm going to destroy you once and for all. Unless, of course... You review my game, Bleach the Shattered Blade. Oh, come on, man. Look, I already did a Wii game this month. If I do another video with a Wii game, everybody's going to be pissed at me. I don't want to do just anime video games. I want to do all kinds of video games. Movie license, anime, do regular video games. I want to do it all. I'm the universal gamer, for God's sake. Well, it's either that, or I'll have my entire zombie army murder you. So, what do you say, Eugene? Do we have a deal? Fine. The next review on the Universal Gamer is going to be Bleach the Shattered Blade. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>